Good evening, YouTube. Working on the pie top again tonight. So I've been looking at some sort of an SSD solution for this. And what I originally thought of is I had a, an extra SSD and I was thinking I could maybe stuff it in here. But the, the battery is like right here where my finger is. And then the other problem with the SSD I have is this one uses both 5 and 12 volts. You can get USB to uh, SATA adapters, and there are plain ones with just the USB cable and then they have uh, ones with external power but again where do you put the external power supply in here? So I was looking and they make USB to M2 adapters here and I did some quick measuring and based on the measurements so this is the the M SATA adapter I was thinking it was a pretty close fit but look at that yeah I was thinking it was going to be a tight fit I had to rearrange I had to put the uh, prototyping board here and then the speaker and then the breadboard so but wow that is just perfect and then we picked up a Samsung 500 gig M2 SSD and yes this is USB 2 so we're not talking about super high data rates but what I've read is with USB 2 and an SSD you get on the order of 35 megabytes a second throughput to the SD card you're usually in the range of 15 to 20 megabytes a second so you've got about a two times speed up with USB 2 and then the other thing is with the SD card running in a some sort of a desktop or laptop OS you can wear the SD cards out very quickly versus the SSDs have a lot longer lifetime. Yeah, so I think this will just barely work. This SSD is rated 1.7 amps at 3.3 volts. And it, I think this card has a little uh, step down buck converter on it to uh, drop the voltage down. So I'm hoping. 1.2 amps at 5 volts will be enough for this. We may not have a lot of extra for external USB, but I guess we'll find out. I guess the other option is I go to a smaller SSD if that is the case, but I have to do a few modifications here. Enable booting off a USB and then boosting the output power. And I believe this board here has its own output power here. There's a choke here and I'm guessing there's some sort of power circuitry on this board. So maybe I'm in good shape here. This might be a whole separate uh, power supply from the uh, USB on the Raspberry Pi. So fingers crossed that it works. You know the only way you find out is you plug it in and see what happens. And then the other thing, since you got Bluetooth here on the Raspberry Pi, get a Bluetooth mouse. I picked one up that's color coordinated even. I'll have to probably get this thing charged and then see if we can pair up. Oh, there's the blue searching for. There we go, look at that. Bluetooth mouse, pairing request sent. Oh, look at that, now I got a mouse. So there we've got a pie top and a matching color matching Bluetooth mouse. So there we go. We got a mouse. We have uh, sound with the speaker. So for instance I can go over here. I've got Cody. So I can click over here. Pick up the local news. Live TV on my Raspberry Pi laptop. And you can stop. Yeah, that works works really nice. It, I mean, it's not a stereo speaker or anything, but so there we've got Cody running. 
plus the PyTop OS running Linux. And now I gotta get this stuff all configured. So, so yeah, before I plug this into the PyTop, I've gotta get the Pi OS image onto the SSD. So yeah, what I've wanted to test here is I put my ZYX Studio USB power monitor in line with the SSD just to see what sort of power and I still have the SD card in so I've already booted this once and the first time it had to go through and check the file system but I'll boot it up again here so I'm still booting off of SD and let me zoom in on the current monitor there you can see we're 5 volts and it was got up a little over 400 milliamps right there on the power monitor so I think we're good on the power it's got good voltage and I'm not seeing any lightning bolt on the display from the Raspberry Pi so I think this module here has its own power supply too I still have the max USB current set to one but yeah we're not anywhere close there you know there's 380 390 and definitely the USB does power down too. So they, they have the power in this thing set up really nice. So when it powers down, everything powers down. So let me pull the SD card now and we'll see if things are going to work here. So I've got the SD card right there. Now let's see what happens. So there we've got power. Now supposedly there's a bit of a delay when you boot off a USB. I don't see anything happening yet. I was able to look at the drive on my laptop which has USB 2 so I could see the files there. And yeah, right here I put a little uh, foam pad and I had to cut that little tab or the little push pin for the magnet right there. I had to take that off. So we're in one of the back USB ports. I won't be able to see that there, but I'm waiting. There's power. We've got the same 5 volts, 370 milliamps. I still don't see anything on the front here. Okay, it isn't a... Or there might be something different with a, that USB port. I think it's just daisy chain. There's a, a flat flex cable that goes from the one USB port over to the front. And that doesn't look like it's working there. I guess first try did not work there. So there you can see I had the card plugged into the back port just to see if there's any difference. But nothing going there, so I think what I'm going to try is try mounting the SSD, boot off the SD card, and then access the SSD as a mounted file system just to see if everything's there. Yeah, it's not quite plug and play, but I'll get back to you if I make any progress here.